All right, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the monthly online service of the Church of Infinite Spirit. I am Reverend Lauren Skye, one of the founding ministers of this church, and our community has been meeting since 1999, and it's the mission of this church to support spiritual freedom by supporting people in knowing themselves as spiritual beings and as a part of the consciousness that creates this universe. And we celebrate the joyous transformation that comes from knowing oneself as spirit. We hope to recapture the intention of church as a respite from the noise of life, as a space of remembrance of our spiritual nature, and as a space of joyful connection. In a way, we are a church of nons. We're non-denominational, non-judgmental, and non-dogmatic. There's no control, punishment, or reward energy here. We respect your divine right. <clears throat> Pardon me. We respect your divine right to create your own reality and manage your energy as you choose. It's always a take what you can use and leave the rest environment. When we share, it's with the intention of inspiring you to find your own truth rather than convincing you of ours. We always begin our times together with a short meditation. So let's do that now. Meditation invites us out of the stories we're telling ourselves about what's true and invites us in to deep spiritual truth where we have the power to change our story and change our lives. And doing it together is so powerful. So in this meditation, we will walk through a short four-step process to come present as spirit and bring energy into our bodies. We'll take a break from everything that's going on around us and begin to connect with what's within us. If you wanna participate, it's helpful to close your eyes and place your feet on the floor or ground. If you don't wanna participate, no worries. Just take yourself off mute certainly and do whatever you'd like for maybe the next three minutes. So the first step of this four-step process is called grounding. We begin by noticing our bodies. So with your eyes closed, perhaps a nice deep breath through the body. And just notice how your body feels right now. Head your neck, shoulders tight or relaxed. Notice your back, your arms, perhaps on the rests of the chair or in your lap. Your butt in the chair, legs, feet, fingers and toes. As I said, we begin with grounding, and grounding is an imaginary connection between the first chakra energy center and the center of the earth. The first chakra center energy center is at the back, the base of your spine. So if you would simply notice your back, spine, and the base of your spine. And with your imagination, imagine growing a tail of light like could be white, but it could be purple or green or any color you enjoy. In fact, a colored tail of light tends to work better than a white one. And this tail of light is gonna extend from your body right where a tail would if you had one. And this tail of light is gonna grow straight down through the chair, floor, into the earth, and all the way to the center of the earth. Imagine that tail of light connecting with the earth's core. If a tail of light just doesn't work for you, you could imagine a tree, a tree root tail, like a tree root extending from the base of your spine, grounding you into the earth like a tree, but grounding all the way to the center of the earth. This connection from the base of the spine to the center of the earth gives us a way to release energy we don't need. 
And as we do, we come more present into the body. So much of the pain we experience, the stress we experience is simply the result of energies recycling over and over through the chakra system. We ground from the first chakra. So when the energy we don't need hits that first chakra, boom, it has a way out down to the center of the earth where it is recycled into neutral creative force. So we're not sending negativity into the planet. It's only negative when we hold. When we let go, the energy is transformed and becomes beneficial. You might notice the sensation of being grounded, connected to the Earth's body of origin. <clears throat> Earth's planet of origin. The second step of this four-step process is to open the sixth chakra energy center. And the sixth chakra sits right in the middle of our head. It's behind our eyes, between the ears, deep in the brain. There's a gland called the pineal gland. That's the physical equivalent of the sixth chakra. The sixth chakra is the seat of clear vision or clairvoyance. And the way to open it is to simply place our attention there. Imagine being in the middle of your head. We can be anywhere or any when scattered across space and time. And when we intend to refocus, recenter into the sixth chakra, we bring all that power lost in the scatter back to ourselves to create our experience. Next step, we're going to manage our energy fields or auras, the energies around us. Everything emanates energy, people, objects, situations, everything is energy. So as we manage the energy right around our bodies, we become more proactive about our experience. Again, it's done by pretending. Simply imagine you're in a big bubble or eggshell. So all around you, a protective bubble. And it's about an arm's length out. So if you were to stretch your arms out to the sides, you just touch it. Or stretch one arm in front and one arm in back, you just touch it. Kind of what we think of as personal space is a good size for an aura bubble. And you can imagine that this aura bubble connects with the grounding cord below your feet. So even if energy you don't need comes into the aura bubble, it can ground right out to the earth. This aura bubble keeps us home in our present time body and also gives us a, a boundary in the sea of consciousness where sometimes the weather is chaotic. If you'd like to make the aura bubble stronger, you could imagine painting it a color. Mine's purple today. You can actually choose the color of your aura by painting it a color that you like. In the paradigm of information that we work with, the energy that we carry in the body, the chakras and the aura is reflected back to us with absolute brilliance in our experiences of earth. So we create change by changing our energy. We can think of different flavors of energy, like different feelings. So there might be stress energy, joy energy, worry energy, clarity energy. You're releasing energy by being grounded. Would you notice an energy you'd like more of in your world day to day? Maybe you'd like more joy. Maybe you'd like more prosperity. That's a popular one. Maybe you'd like more love, fun, balance. Imagine a word that represents an energy that you'd like to have more of in your day-to-day -day world. And here's how to create it and bring it in. Would you imagine above your head a big golden ball, like a big gold sun? And I mean big. So part of the gold sun is going to be inside your aura bubble and part of it is going to be outside because the sun is too big to fit inside your aura bubble. Make it as least as, at least as tall as you are. Now, remember your word, your energy that you want to create or bring in, and imagine writing that word right across the sun. L-O-V-E, 
right across the sun or whatever word. It's kind of important to just pick one. It might be some folks making salad suns out there. It really works better to pick one word. You can always stack them up like an ice cream cone. And as you write that word across your sun, L-O-V-E or whatever your word is, watch what happens. The sun will become, absorb and multiply the word. It becomes a big gold sun of whatever energy you've chosen. Imagine food coloring into water. The food coloring permeates, merges with the water. They become one and more than the two components. This sun absorbing, becoming, multiplying the frequency of the word that you've chosen, it becomes a big gold sun of love or whatever you've chosen right above your head. To bring that energy into your inner world and so into your outer experience, simply imagine setting the sun or poke a hole in the bottom of it and let that energy stream right into your body and fill you. Let it fill up your neck, and pardon me, let it fill up your head and neck and shoulders. Filling head to toe, let it fill up your chest, torso, all the cells getting a speck of this energy and the space in between the cells filling with it. Bring it into your arms, back, low back, legs, hands, knees, all the way down to your toes. And if there's extra, let it spill into the aura around you, changing the environment right around your body too. Grounding and bringing in a big gold sun of whatever vibration or energy you'd like. It's a great way to change your condition and become more powerful in any moment. When that's happened, you could take a big deep breath for that body again. You might wanna stay right here, especially if you're familiar with the techniques. You might wanna stay here in the meditation space. You might wanna open your eyes and stretch to receive today's message, whatever works for you. Today is a special day for us as we celebrate the ordination of our new ministers of the Church of Infinite Spirit. So ministers, if you're on the call, would you maybe give us a little reaction emoji? Let us know you're here and who you are. There's Lynn, she's on a phone so she can't do her emoji, Samantha. Catherine's given us a heart. So our ministers today are Mary Lou, Elizabeth, Margaret, Helgrid, Matthew, Samantha, Genevieve, Lynn, Catherine, and Rebecca. And today is a special day for us as we celebrate them. We'll celebrate them as the lovely people that they are, their accomplishment of becoming ministers and their next steps. And celebrating is a great thing to do in so many ways. And in a wonderful synchronicity, we're doing it at the beginning of the season of celebrations. And I do hope that these folks will celebrate themselves and their work and kind of wallow in it a little bit. So often as humans, we accomplish something, then we kind of check and move on to the next thing that we imagine we should accomplish. But we could savor the time. We could rest in it for a bit and really take it in. No pain, no gain, we say. But we could have a time of no pain, no pain. And savoring really is the final step in a creative process, like cooking a great meal and then really enjoying it. After all the preparation, why would you rush through? But we often do. Savoring a completion deepens the integration of what's happened into the sense of oneself. And the acknowledgement, honoring, and celebration of a thing make it more real and prepare us, fortify us with validation and success. And those feelings can fill us up and lay the groundwork for the next step. Every ending is a new beginning. And so we'll create some lovely, joyful energies 
for this ending and so create some lovely and joyful energies for the new beginning that it is as well. For all our new ministers, the culmination happening today is becoming a minister of this church. This church, the Church of Infinite Spirit, was founded in 1998 by me and a couple of other brave souls. We wanted to create a space of spiritual freedom where people could come and explore their nature, path, and power as spiritual beings without the dogma of religion, but with accountability for their creation of their own experience and with accountability for their influence in the unfolding collective reality. And so we did. We received our federal nonprofit status about a year later. What it looks like has had to change over the last couple of years. We had online classes before COVID, but not online church. So it's been a little odd, but the great gift of it has been the opportunity to connect with people all over. Our new ministers are in New York, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and our home state of Colorado. This is a church space that supports each person, each soul, in discovering their spiritual nature, their unique path, passion, gifts, and lessons in this incarnation. Now, for those of you that know them, these might not be the first people of all the people that you know that you thought would become ministers, but here they are. They're solidifying their agreement to hold the light of spiritual truth in the foreground of everyday consciousness, in celebration of life and in service to others. In a way, that's what all ministers do, all healers, shamans, whatever the title. They remember, each in their own way and within their own paradigm, but they remember spiritual truth. And we seek them out in times of challenge when we've forgotten, because it is in the remembering that the healing begins. We're holding our light in our own way. As I said earlier, it's the mission of this church to support spiritual freedom by inspiring people to know themselves as spiritual beings and as a part of the consciousness that creates this universe. The concept is simple, spirit with a body, all one and unique, two realms at once. But the journey isn't always easy. To fulfill it, one has to look, one has to look at and own how they've created their own life and embrace that life without blame or judgment, knowing that true change only comes from oneself and that willingness to see oneself as spirit, the most transformative vision of all. We look at our timelines and the information or energy we each carry, stepping out of blame and judgment, stepping out of us and them and moving into freedom, knowing that the energy we carry and what we believe creates our experience. A minister of this church is someone who holds that awareness for themselves and others, no matter what. It's the no matter what part that's the challenge. And these people have worked hard to that end. They've agreed to hold the truth that spirit is real and is the foundation of reality. That each of us is a soul with a body, free will, and a journey before us. They've agreed to hold that truth, the truth of the light, even in the seemingly dark times when it isn't easy. They've agreed to hold space, witness, and validate as each soul unfolds experience according to their own choice without judging them. They're letting go of illusion, division, again, stepping out of right and wrong, so big, and out of us and them, even bigger. <laughs> to do that for others, they have to be willing to do it for themselves. And to that end, they've spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and I'm sure what seemed like more hours and hours in meditation, cultivating spiritual awareness, perception, clearing themselves and looking energetically at themselves and others. They've looked squarely at spiritual threats, energies that stood between them and their direct relationship with God or spirit or consciousness 
or whatever you like to call that energy that is. They've opened up, shedding an identity based on the past, cultural labels, or on fear and pain, moving into the foundation of their sense of self as a being in a body, emerging into truth, and the truth that they are, as we all are, vast, a part of things, accountable, powerful, a creator and a co-creator with God as they see that energy. They've learned and practiced spiritual techniques to see, move, and change energy in themselves and for others. Through their programs here, they've learned and embraced the energy reading and healing skill sets. And that is quite a thing to do. Allowing ourselves to access and practice those levels creates a huge shift in the sense of self. It's really a big, big deal with far reaching implications in our lives, as some of you who know them might have witnessed in their journey. It takes courage, willingness, persistence, and a decent sense of humor. And these people have all of that. I admire them. We've had ministers training here for 21 years now, and every group is different. This group was particularly amazing in their willingness to move past resistance and persist. For some of them, they did it even as giant challenges arose in their personal lives. They were willing to look at themselves and own what they saw, and that's no small feat. They took a lot of class time onto their calendars and then stuck with it. They've seen quite a lot of each other at many levels over these last years. And their grace toward each other has been tremendous, even when they were sometimes irritated, activated, or lit up. They are truly spiritual warriors. These warriors are not armed with rules and regulations and threats of eternal punishment. Instead, they've got vision, spiritual skill, courage, willingness, and maybe the most powerful, the ability to be amused. What will make them ministers is not my bopping them on the head, although if we were in person, I would actually do that. <laughs> but what will make them ministers is how they see themselves and what they do with all they've gained. I'm honored to have them as a part of this space. So let's make it official before they change their minds. <laughs> Here's what it will look like. I think let's kind of call them up, groups of three, if everybody's on, we'll find out, and then one solo. So new ministers, when you hear your name with the reverend title, please implement the confetti I sent you, if you have it. Those witnessing, Expressions of celebration are welcome. Even though we're on mute, we can see you, your applause and your cheers. And after we've done all 10 ministers, we'll come off mute for a noisy round of applause. So ministers, if you uh, are on the call, would you take yourself onto video if you haven't already? So maybe you'll show up right at the top of the screen. And I'm thinking if you take, as I call you, if you would take yourself off mute, it might pop you up higher so that everybody's seeing you on their first screen, such as the age of Zoom. Let's start with Mary Lou, Elizabeth, and Margaret. So Mary Lou, Elizabeth, and Margaret, would you take yourselves off mute? Is Margaret on? There she is in a hat. <laughs> Lovely. Great. Mary Lou, Elizabeth, and Margaret. By the power vested in me, by the Church of Infinite Spirit and the state of Colorado, and with the permission you have granted this church, I hereby ordain you, the Reverend Mary Lou Butcher Roth, the Reverend Elizabeth Diamond, and the Reverend Margaret Williams, each of you ministers in good standing of the Church of Infinite Spirit with all of the rights, privileges, and growth periods pertaining thereto. May your ministry serve you and those whose lives you touch 
with spiritual growth, awareness, understanding, and amusement. Confetti. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right, nice. Okay, so Helgrid, Matthew, and Samantha, would you guys come off mute? Where's Helgrid, Matthew, and Samantha? Great. Helgrid, Matthew, and Samantha, by the power vested in me by the Church of Infinite Spirit and the state of Colorado, and with the permission you've granted this church, I hereby ordain you the Reverend Helgrid Randolph, the Reverend Matthew Morey, and the Reverend Samantha Pell. Each of you ministers in good standing of the Church of Infinite Spirit with all of the rights, privileges, and growth periods pertaining thereto. May your ministry serve you and those whose lives you touch with spiritual growth, awareness, understanding, and amusement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right, Jenny Viva, Lynn, and Catherine. There's Jenny Viva, Lynn, there's Lynn, Catherine, where are you? Catherine, all right. <laughs> Jenny Viva, Lynn, and Catherine. By the power vested in me by the Church of Infinite Spirit and the state of Colorado, and with the permission you've granted this church, I hereby ordain you, Reverend Jenny Viva Collison, Reverend Lynn Brady, and Reverend <laughs> Catherine Argento. Each of you ministers in good standing of the Church of Infinite Spirit with all of the rights, privileges, and growth periods pertaining thereto. May your ministry serve you and those whose lives you touch with spiritual growth, awareness, understanding, and amusement. <laughs> Jamie's showing fireworks, nice. Yay. And last, but not anywhere near least, Rebecca Andrianopoulos. Where is Rebecca? There she is. I wanted to specially celebrate Rebecca because she's been with us the longest, 15 years, I wanna say, if not way more, at least 15. Rebecca, come off mute if you can, I know you're on a phone. And because Rebecca has held spiritual truth for some of the most difficult journeys a person can have in this life. Mm -hmm. so I really honor you. Thank you. Rebecca, by the power vested in me, by the Church of Infinite Spirit and the State of Colorado, and with the permission you've granted this church, I hereby ordain you, the Reverend Rebecca Andrianakos, a minister in good standing of the Church of Infinite Spirit with all of the rights, privileges, and growth periods pertaining thereto. May your ministry serve you and those whose lives you touch with spiritual growth, awareness, understanding, and amusement. If anybody wants to come off mute and give all of these ministers a big hand. So fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Irene. Lovely. Okay. Hi, sweet oh. Rebecca. It's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> How are you, sweet lady? I love you. I miss you. I miss you so much, too. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. We've known Kelly for like 20 years, too. So those guys know each other. <laughs> All right. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Let me put everybody back on mute for just a bit. So I'd like to close the ordination part of the service with an old version of our candle lighting. We've started our in-person services with a candle lighting since the beginning. And the candle behind me is the most recent one we were using. 
So I'd like to end by going back to the beginning with the words from our first candlelighting at our very first services. A few words from Jesus. As you can imagine, we see Jesus a little bit differently in this church, and that's a story for another day, but some lovely words. This candle, dedicated June 4th, 2017, symbolizes the light of the world. As Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid, nor does a man light a candle and place it under a bushel basket, but puts it on a stand for all in the house to see. Let your light so shine. Each of these people and all of us are the light of the world. We're all a part of the whole. And an incarnated spirit is not a thing to hide. As we stand up and be seen, become and share our unique selves, paths, and passions. We give and receive healing. As these people carry their beautiful light forth, they've chosen to do so as representatives of this church. So the light of the church is strengthened. At our in-person ordinations, each minister would carry a candle and light it from the church candle, symbolizing the growing light of the church. We can't do that today, but I do want to light one more candle. I'm going to get up and do that now. This new light represents the light our new ministers will help others discover within themselves as they offer healing, support, and inspiration. And on behalf of these people, the ones to come that you will serve, I say thank you. Thank you for showing up and for staying. And on behalf of all of us, thank you for letting your light shine and increasing the light in earth. Maybe the best way we can honor these people is to walk the talk. Let's go back into meditation just for a moment to notice our energy, our own vastness, and our own power. If you'd like to participate, would you close your eyes and place your feet on the floor? Breathe. And notice that you are here in this moment a spiritual being in the journey of earth there's candles on the table and a flame in every one of us in the heart fourth chakra the flame of eternal spirit each flame a unique representation, a unique part of consciousness. You might just allow, notice the flame within you. Let it fill you, let it grow. Don't place it under a bushel basket, but let it be seen. Let it come out and let it add to the light of the world. We're grounded. Sixth chakras are open. Let's end this with a big gold sun, just like earlier. Maybe you wanna bring in the same vibration. Maybe you wanna bring in something different. If you're a new minister, maybe you wanna bring in celebration. Whatever you, you'd like, you can create. Whatever you'd like to receive, you can give to yourself. Would you imagine that big gold ball or big gold sun above your head? What's the word or vibration you'd like to receive? Practice your spiritual power. Write the word across the sun. Sounds silly, works great. Watch the sun absorb, become, and multiply the word, becoming a big gold sun of energy, vibrating at whatever frequency you've chosen above your head. Then pop it. 
or set it, pop it, set it, pop it or drop it. And bring that light that you have chosen right into your body, right into your experience of yourself. Don't wait until, have it now. Let yourself fill as the golden light comes in and fills up your head and neck and shoulders. It's filling the chakras too as it comes in and fills the torso, chest, torso, all your guts. Your arms, your butt, your legs, knees, all the way down to your fingers, all the way down to your toes. And if there's more, all around you. Lovely. When you're ready, would you open your eyes? Uh, ah. So now it's official. And as we all know, one thing all ministers need to know is how to ask for money. <laughs> so we will put that lesson to work right away with Reverend Elizabeth Diamond doing the offertory for today. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Lauren. Uh -huh. So were we in person, this is the time in our service where we would be passing around a basket and asking for contributions to the Church of Infinite Spirit. And uh, since we can't pass a physical basket right now, I'm going to um, put a link in the chat. And uh, this is a place where if you wish, if it feels right to you, you can make a donation. And um, so please consider supporting us if it does feel right to you. We always ask that if you contribute that it is done in a space of joy and appreciation and never out of a sense of obligation. Your donations are, um, we are a nonprofit, so your donations are tax deductible and they go to all kinds of things like website support, making sure this space is offered uh, for free to people to come to service. And so no matter the size of donation, it's always appreciated. And um, we trust that whatever is donated to today returns to each of you uh, many, many fold. And we're very, very grateful. And in the spirit of um, donation and offering, I'm going to offer to you today uh, in the form of a few jokes, something to tickle your funny bone. <laughs> so what do you call a boomerang that just won't come back? A stick. Um, why was the Easter Bunny so upset? Because he was having a bad hair day. <laughs> why did the medium cross the road to talk to the other side? <laughs> and did I ever tell you about the psychic boyfriend I almost had? <laughs> he broke up with me before we met. <laughs> and did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, no atmosphere. <laughs> and last but not least, this is my favorite. What's the difference between a cupcake and a muffin? A cupcake is a muffin that believes in miracles. <laughs> So thank you, everybody, for your donations, and thank you for being here. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> thank you, Reverend Elizabeth. Uh, so we're getting ready to close our time together today. And in closing, I'd like to share the short dedication at the very beginning of the book, Emmanuel's book. It's a lovely book. And this dedication really speaks to me and very much aligns with our purposes here. This book is dedicated to the image that each soul holds within its own human consciousness and to the memory of the light that it follows, of the being that it yearns to become and of the truth that it already is. Love that. So, with that, I invite you to take this vibration of celebration throughout the rest of your day, maybe throughout the rest of your holiday season, maybe throughout the rest of your life. We'll stay on the call for a bit for those who'd like to have some social time and maybe the new ministers would like to share a few words. Before we do, 
I thank you deeply for your time and your attention today. I recognize that time and attention are two of your greatest resources in this incarnation, and I'm honored that you've shared them with us. Now, I'll say end of service. We'll turn off the recording and have some fun.